So while Benny recovers and tries to find his voice again, the comic story was nice enough to offer up a little channel time to me, Kate Jewell, so I can talk about one of my all-time favorite topics, that being Young Justice. And because Benny did lose his voice, I might actually be able to make it through this whole video before someone tells me to shut up. Now, Young Justice is a beloved show for a number of reasons. It had rich characters, great episodic storytelling that pulled from some of the best DC comics had to offer, but a factor I don't hear people talk about near as much is the amazing work that the show put into redesigning some of our favorite heroes and villains, and as such, I thought it might be fun to take a look at 10 of my own personal favorite makeovers from Young Justice's first two seasons as we eagerly await season three. Starting things off at the number 10 spot, we have Guy Gardner. Now, this first redesign might actually hold the least amount of actual screen time out of anyone on the show, and that's Guy Gardner, everybody, our favorite jerky member of the Green Lantern Corps. I like the costume because it's so damn simple. Guy has always been a fan of the vest in the comic, so what I dig about what Young Justice did is they pretty much just took things a step further by ditching the vest altogether and letting Guy go sleeveless. I mean, it makes a ton of sense, right? He is something of a superhero dude bro in his own way. And what's more bro than sleeveless bro? What you gotta do? You gotta show off them Green Lantern gains without your sleeves, right? Coming in at the number 9 spot, we have Mr. Twister. Now, one of the very first villains the Young Justice team ever did battle with also ended up being one of the very best redesigned. I'm, of course, talking about Mr. Twister. You see, in the comics, Twister was more of a weird hobo-looking guy who could control the wind. Here, though, he's a sick-as-hell robot man with ties to Tio Moro and his many creations. Fun fact, the hobo version of Mr. Twister was the first villain the Teen Titans ever fought, so it only made sense that this younger, new team of heroes in Young Justice would also do battle with him very early on in their careers. Sadly, for whatever reason, the robot version never really caught on, and in the comics just recently, as early as Titans Hunt, they've reimagined Mr. Twister yet again to be some sort of Lovecraftian Freddy Krueger type of character. Which, you know, for what it's worth, is pretty cool on its own, I will admit. Moving on to the number 8 spot, we have Adam Strange. For this next entry on the list, we're going to the cosmic side of things to take a look at Adam Strange. Now, Strange has always had a lot of Flash Gordon in him, and what I enjoy about the Young Justice version of the costume is that, you know, he just kind of falls backwards into all the stuff that he just wears in the comics all the time. Even the jetpack he comes across during his adventures. The robes are also a nice modern updating, too, of the retro cool spacesuit that he would usually wear. Personally, I really hope we see more of Strange and his Zeta Beams in Season 3 of Young Justice. Coming in at the number 7 spot, we have the Forever People. Keeping things nice and spacey here, we have not a single person, but an entire team's worth of redesigns. I'm of course talking about the Forever People. Now, while these fourth world Jack Kirby creations looked pretty good in their original state, what I dig about what Young Justice manages to do is keep all the personality we love, while also adding in some sweet, slick, neon Tron stripes to really update the team. Young Justice even sees fit to reimagining Infinity Man, the superpowered being that comes about when the entirety of the Forever People fuse together. In the comics, Infinity Man just looked like another dude in a suit, but here in Young Justice, the redesigned version looks like a creature made of pure energy. Now, while these guys may have only had one episode under their belts, I think it's safe to assume if Season 3 is going to focus on Darkseid and the New Gods, we're probably going to see the Forever People again. Stealing the number 6 spot, we have Bane. Alright, so we're going to leave space for a moment here and come back down to Earth to the prison nation of Santa Prisca and the man who broke the bat. This guy is easily one of my favorite comic baddies with a costume I think way too many people end up overthinking and thus over-designing. Luckily, Young Justice keeps things nice and simple while also reimagining the mask. Now it's not so much a Lucha Libre thing where everything is covered, now it's kind of like a war paint thing, which means our villain, who is here voiced by Danny Trejo, can actually emote with his mouth and his eyes. Bane only had a single speaking role in Young Justice, so I hope we can get to see some more of him in Season 3. That brings us to the midway point of the list, and number 5, which is claimed by Lobo. Now, who doesn't love the main man? Nobody, that's who. Young Justice had a great take on everyone's favorite smack-talking space bounty hunter. For one thing, he looks considerably more alien warrior and less earthling roadie. Now his clothes actually carry some bones on them. His famous hook weapon, too, also gets an upgrade, now looking more organic like he made it himself, and less like the one from the comics where it looks like he just stole it from a metal shop. Lobo, of course, means wolf 
in Spanish and the costume now sports some actual fur, which is a nice touch, but by far the greatest thing they do with Lobo here is actually take all his crazy fragging, crazy feminine catchphrases and make it part of his own weird alien language. Now that's just smart. The number four slot on our list of best Young Justice redesigns ends up going to Destro. Comic fans love them some Destro, whether it's in cartoons, video games, TV, and maybe even really soon in the movies. But one thing comic fans can never seem to agree on, at least in my own personal experience, is what the dude should look like. Sometimes he's got a lot of armor on him, sometimes he's very sleek and ninja-like. Heck, even his choice in color scheme and swords change from place to place, writer to writer. It's because of these reasons and more I dig what Young Justice did. They kind of split the difference on all of these death strokes and gave us the best of all the different worlds. Heck, they even added their own little flourishes like giving him that kind of ponytail bit that hangs off the back of the mask. It works great in the show's many action scenes to kind of, you know, show motion. Deathstroke was a late addition to Young Justice, and I definitely hope we see more of him in Season 3. Okay, then with that behind us, we're heading into the nitty-gritty now, the top three, and claiming the number three spot is Arsenal. So, okay, it's no secret that I love Green Arrow and his extended family, so you can trust me when I say that the ongoing Roy Harper arc from Young Justice was one of the best things the show ever did. In fact, he did something so smart, so amazing, I'm shocked the comics didn't try and borrow the idea for themselves. Basically, it let fans have their cake and eat it too by allowing Red Arrow and Arsenal to be two completely different characters, and the costume Arsenal got in Young Justice really did reflect that he was his own man. First off, you got the cyborg arm, which is a carryover from the comics. Granted, it's a lot bulkier and a lot shinier than the comic one, and instead of a dumb, distracting trucker cat, he just got a good old-fashioned head shave to match his new, meaner attitude, and you know what? It was good stuff because he got the other Roy there too. In short, it was a good look that came about because of good writing. And with that, we come to our penultimate spot, and the number two entry is Black Manta. So even though I'm a fan, I think we can all admit comic Black Manta has always looked a bit, well, silly. It's the helmet, it's too big and bulbous, you wonder how his neck can even support that kind of thing. Yeah, I know it's supposed to look like a diving helmet, but still, Young Justice did great things by Black Manta by more or less having his suit become like Space Age battle armor and finally gave him a serious enough neck to hold up that helmet. But that's not the best part of the redesign. Young Justice actually lets us get to know the man under the mask, who is a very regal gentleman with a slight accent, salt and pepper hair. He's basically an underwater version of the most interesting man on Earth. The show never did really dive into Manta's backstory, and honestly, they didn't have to. His face and his costume told the whole story for us, and you know what? That's why I love it, and that's why it's number two. And just like that, we finally reach the number one spot in my list of my favorite Young Justice redesigns, and that honor goes to Sportsmaster. Yes, that's right, Sportsmaster. It's kind of a name that any rational person would laugh out loud about, yet in the hands of the Young Justice creative team, he's proof positive that one great costume redesign can reinvigorate a whole character. For one, gone were the garish purple colors to be replaced with something more militaristic. Gone is the fabric grifter style mask to be replaced with a much cooler looking high-tech hockey mask, you know, like something out of Jason X or, you know, even Casey Jones, and you have yourself one cool looking leg breaker for the light. Once again, a good look can only only take you so far though, so it was also beneficial that the writers had given Sportsmaster a lot to do, a lot of really great long-form stories about his relationship with his family, and I do believe it's because of that that he was the overall best redesigned, reimagined, and made over character from all of Young Justice's first two seasons. Well, there you have it everybody, my list of 10 awesome redesigns that stuck out to me from Young Justice. Did I miss any? What do you hope to see get redesigned in Season 3? And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Joel, filling in for Benny the Comic Story, and I will see you all next time.